By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what stacking is, why you should consider using this strategy, and how to exploit your opponents when they decide to stack against you. And if you've been confused on what stacking is, that's, that's what we're gonna talk about. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So normal pickleball switching, right? So we're gonna here we're, we're in our position right now. I'm starting the game. We're imagining it's zero zero two. And here's gonna be important language. Starting position are two words we want to remember throughout this video. So starting position is me right here on the right, Tyler right here on the left. So anytime our score is zero, two, four, six, eight, or ten, I'm gonna be on the right side, Tyler's gonna be on the left side. Anytime our score is one, three, five, seven, or nine, Tyler you should find yourself on the right side and myself on the left side. Okay, so starting position, back to our starting position. Okay, this is our starting position. This is our, anytime the score is even, but if the score is odd, think opposite. Odd, opposite. Opposite our starting position. Okay, important to know. Back to our back original to our position. Start. Ready? Starting position on three. One, two, three. Starting posi oh, position. Okay, here we go. Okay, all right, Zeus. You play. Oh, here we go. So, right, normal switching, we won the first point. If we win a point, we switch sides, right? And now yep. I'm gonna serve on this side, okay? Score is one, zero. Now, imagine I win the point again. We're gonna switch back, okay? Now it'd be two, zero, right? And so that's how pickleball is typically played. If you've been playing for just a few months, that's probably how you play. You play a little bit on the right, you play a little bit on the left. We're gonna call that the normal world. Now let's go to the alternative world, which is stacking. Stacking is a specific double strategy the serving team and the receiving team can use that allows the team to have each player on their preferred side or their stronger side, okay? For example, let's say that we love having... <laughs> <laughs> and if you know anything you know, you know about stacking, we wouldn't want Tyler. Big, playing. strong backhander. Right. <laughs> so we're going to stack Tyler on the left. We want to stack me on the right, which means throughout all the points, we're going to want Tyler to be playing on the left side and me to be playing on the right side, okay? So we're going to imagine that we serve it and we win the point. So let's just do it, okay? Split, boom. We serve it, okay? Boom. And we win the point. We're not going to have Tyler switch. What I'm going to do is, this is where the stack comes in. I'm going to now come over here. And there's nothing in the rules that says we can't have two players standing on one of the sides before we play. And so we're gonna stack, stack me two players on one box in order to have Tyler on his preferred side, which is the left. And then after I serve to get me on my preferred side, which is the right, okay? One, zero, two. Ah. Ah. Go. Nice. So we won that, okay, two. so now we're back Sorry. in our starting position. It's two, zero, two. I'm back on my side, but now we don't have to worry about being on the same service box. Two, zero, two. Nice, okay, misses, boom, missed the ball. Three, zero, two. Okay, I'm coming back over. And Tyler's just gonna slide. Three, zero, two. Okay. Four, zero, two. So again, that keeps me on my preferred side in this circumstance, which is on the right, keeps Tyler on the, his preferred side, which is the left. We're gonna get to the returning side and stacking here in a moment, but let's just stay on the serving side to keep it simple right now. Let's say it was a side out and then we got it back. Now it's uh, back to a side out for us. We lost the first point. Now we're here at four, zero, two. Okay, so now Tyler is serving over to JT. Four, zero, we'll two. Win. We'll win one point. Okay, boom, ball goes out. Okay, so it's five, zero, two. We're gonna move over. I'm on my preferred side, the right side. Tyler's gonna serve here because we have to stack on this side. Because remember, right now, we have five points. So odd number five means opposite our starting position. Tyler started on the left, now he's on the right. He's gonna serve and slide over to his side. Here we go. Okay. Aye. Ah, nice. So then it would be, a side out and we'll get to how you handle the return in a second. Now, let's talk about why you would stack. Today's video is brought to you by Selkirk. So I wrote down six different reasons, and there might be a few more, but six reasons why you might consider stacking with your partner. And if you're having a conversation with your partner and you're like, should we stack, should we not, consider these six things. Number one, if one of your teammates has more length, right? So Tyler's a little bit taller than me, and if he has got more length, I, I can be bigger in the middle here, right? It's harder for Tyler to be really big with his backhand. I have a, a, a lot more length with my forehand here. So if, I have, if I'm taller, a lot of times you're gonna see the taller player on the left. Not always, but it's one reason to consider. Number two, stronger forehand. 
So when you think about mixed doubles, you're often gonna see the guy on the left. Not always. A lot of times though, the guy has a bit more power with his put away and his forehand. And oftentimes the girls actually have a better you know, two-handed backhand and they like, not always, but a lot of times they like their forehand dink. So you'll see the guy play the left side in mixed doubles because of that. Let's say we have a lefty. Todd, put the pad on your left hand. Almost exclusively, if you see a righty lefty playing together, you're gonna see the righty play on the left side and the lefty play on the right side because it puts both forehands in the middle. One thing I learned, I heard this from the Johns brothers one time, they talked about they think the future of pickleball is actually righty lefty because it's so much harder for people to speed up through the middle because we have length and power. Now, there are some downsides in the middle, like you have two forehands, who's gonna typically be the person that takes the middle ball? Because sometimes both players want it, right? Then you get caught. But if those guys work, the, or those girls work it out, then it, it can become a huge advantage. Number three, if you want to hide a player's weakness. So Tyler, nice guy and a budding player, okay? But right now he has a weaker backhand. And because he has a weaker backhand, we can actually hide that weakness in tournament play by sticking him on the right side exclusively. And so he doesn't have to hit many backhands. Because if a ball goes, go ahead and hit a ball to Tyler's backhand. I can come in here and I can actually protect his backhand, where if he's on the left, boom, right? If he's on the left, he's gonna potentially have more trouble. And then the, on the flip side, highlight a strength, right? So a lot of times you're like, well, what side should we play? Well, I've played with guys who have a much bigger forehand in the middle, and that can be a big weapon. So a big forehand in the middle might be a strength. And it's gonna be hard for a player on the right side to get as many forehands when there's a lot of middle returns. Another one might be, for me example, I love to Ernie on this side. So it's a big threat for me to be on the left side. I can't Ernie as much on the right side. Highlight a strength. Number five, you might wanna put a, a certain player in front of another player. So let's say JT and I are dinking and JT keeps speeding up at Tyler, off the bounce, boom, and just owning him. Now, that actually is pretty realistic. <laughs> Just, I love, he's my friend, okay? He might be speeding up, and so I might say, let's just, we gotta, we gotta change something. I maybe say, I think I can handle that. Let's stack me on the right, okay? So I can be the one that JT is typically speeding up on. All right, again, now we have J Tyler with his backhand though, so you, know, you gotta play, you gotta figure out the different situations and, and what's gonna be best for your team to win the most points. Um, and then number six is just giving a different look. Like if you're down zero seven, and you might get stuck on one side where like they're just abusing Tyler's backhand, right? Well, then we might wanna switch it up and just say, let's just change it up and give them something different. Oftentimes that'll help you get off of a number if you're stuck on like zero or one or something like that. So we lost at 502, Tyler was serving. Now, this is often where people get really confused when they're stacking, right? They're back and forth, it's a lot going on, there's a really long point, and then all of a sudden it's a side out. Means the other team gets the serve, ball goes over there, and now, the score currently is zero them, five us, and we're like, wait, where are we supposed to stand? Well, remember, starting position, okay? I started on the right, Tyler started on the left, meaning I should be on the right if we have zero, two, four, six, eight, or 10 points. But if we're on an odd number, that means opposite of starting, okay? So on the return, it's zero, five, we have five. I'm gonna be on the left side, okay? Now, that's one way to get over the confusion, which I, still happens, and that took me like a year and a half to get this right, so I wanna help make it simple for you. On the return, remember, the purpose of stacking is it's a double strategy to help me and my partner be on our preferred side for the, all the reasons that we just talked about. So after Tyler returns the ball, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. The first one's called an after return switch, okay? Go, nice, okay, good. So they won the point, which would mean they're on one, five, one. Now, right, I switched and I ended the point over here, right, Tyler? And this is where we get confused. Now I would come back, boom, and I would go back here and we'd have a wrong returner situation. If you're playing in a tournament, remember, you can always ask the ref, am I the correct returner? The ref will tell you, they'll say no, or they'll say yes, and if they say no, then you'll move around. But remember, you can always tell because we have five points right now, so I should be on the opposite of where I started. Okay, so it's one five. Tyler, I'm gonna return. We're gonna do an after return switch. And as a quick note, the partner who's up at the net should give a signal to the partner who's about to return to avoid any confusion. The standard signal for switch is a five, and the standard signal for stay is a fist. No.
Good. If you're playing a tournament in like the first month or two of playing pickleball, don't stack because you're gonna end up spending way more time talking about stacking and way less time thinking about actual pickleball and it's actually gonna hurt you. So you would definitely wanna practice this before you go into a tournament. First tournament I ever played, I didn't even know you could ask the ref. We got caught like six times in the wrong position. So that's the after return switch. You know, a lot of players like to do this. Part of the reason it's, it can be a good thing to do is, Tyler, let's go imagine that Tyler had just returned the ball and he's running to his position. There is a moment here where he, he like loses vision of the ball, right? He has to cross my back, okay? Now the benefit of this, I can cover the middle while Tyler's getting there, and then I can kind of slide back, which is helpful. That's the after return. There is some danger to it, but there's another way to actually do it, okay? So Tyler's back here, and this is called the of port step on, okay? So in this situation, I'm actually gonna eliminate anything about Tyler, like losing vision or whatever, and I'm just gonna stand right here, okay? Tyler is gonna serve, is gonna return the ball, and then he's gonna get over there Right now he's got to hit a good return. Otherwise there's a lot of court open and I'm just going to step on so he'll never lose vision. Okay, let's go ahead and play a point. Got it. Yeah, good. Quick interruption. Zoom in. Zoop. A little bit out. Zoop. I got a video series, a new video series for you. 18 advanced tips to help you move up a level. Go to the description below, click the link, type in your email and start getting videos immediately. One video a day for 18 days. Let's go. Now back to the video. Let me give you two bonus tips here on some stacking strategy. I'm going a little bit past what Tyler probably told me I should do. I probably should stop here, but I want to give it to you so you have some. One specific strategy for the serving team if we notice that they're stacking throughout this game and we want to try to take advantage of what's called unwinding the stack. It's what we just showed you. On your return, when you have to unwind the stack, return from one side and run to the other, that's more difficult, right? It's much easier to just return it and go to your position. So let's try to exploit what we know is about to happen, which is an unwind of the stack. Tyler, let me just play the left for this position and you're gonna, yeah, we'll stack like this, perfect, okay? So they're unwinding the stack, meaning Jack is gonna be running over to where JT is after the serve. JT has a responsibility, he's gotta cover his partner and Jack, you need, to, you need to get your butt over there. But we're not talking about them yet, we're talking about what you should do as a serving team, okay? What I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna try to attack the guy or the girl in whatever situation you're in, who's on the move. Okay, let's just see if it works right now. Here we go, plan for real. Ah. Go. Okay, here's another example. I, I'm recognizing, you know, I might see a hand signal from Jack. He might put five behind his back, which is a hand signal for like stay or switch. Let's assume he's giving the, the switch. So I know JT's running over here. So if this ball is anywhere towards me, I'm probably going at JT on the move. Here we go. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Pause right there. All right. Backhanding. So good example. So JT, why didn't you run to the kitchen? Like you stayed back on that ball. Uh, I feel like you're the, the best angle to handle anything that you're going to hit at me was further back. Okay. All right. So that's fine. I, and what I do like though is that because I hit a drive and he was all the way back there, now we're in the most advantageous position. We're at the kitchen and they got one guy back. Let's mm -hmm. do one more time. Ah. Ah. Boom, all right? And yeah. so like you're on the move, it's yeah. really hard for you to be able to like stop and, and dig a ball or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me give you one specific strategy as the return team, okay? So they're serving and I know I have to go all the way over there. So number one, I'm gonna return down the line. If I return cross court, let's show an example. Yeah, okay. So that's a really hard shot for me. As you just saw, I returned it short and I have to run all the way over there as Jack is running in, as you notice, and he could drive the ball. It's a really hard volley for me. So instead of me returning cross, right, or left, if you return it deep, you're probably gonna be fine anyway. But you're trying to remove some of the margin for error and give yourself more time. So what I like to do is I actually like to return it line because I know if I return it line, all you have to do, Tyler, is step over and cover the, the line, right? And then he would have to hit a cross court ball which is gonna be, a, the ball's gonna take longer to go cross court than it is line, right? So I, I like the ability to return cross court because I have the lowest part of the net in front of me and I have the most room to work with, but I don't like that his ball is gonna be short going line. So I'm gonna take a shorter route, Tyler's gonna cover the line, and I'm gonna make JT hit a cross court ball you know, if he decides to. Here we go. Boom, okay? 
And one other thing is this, if I hit it down the line, that's going to JT's backhand, which most players have less offense or a worse drive. And if he runs all the way over there and runs around it, I'm okay with that. I get, it's a long time to get over there, and it's a long shot for him to do anything to put too much pressure on me. I can just block that ball. <laughs> so that's what stacking is. It's why you might consider doing it. And if you enjoyed that video, you might also enjoy this video, which is all about what do you do when you're the partner who's not the one hitting the third shot drop. I call it the traffic light system as a way to think about how do you move in the correct way so you actually can get to the kitchen and be more aggressive. Check this video out. Seriously.